the disaster. We can count here in this picture 23 oil wells burning at the same time. We must say that here happens probably the biggest pollution ever made by the human being in the, over our planet. We, in less than one year, we have about one, one billion oil barrels that was burned or spread over the desert. That was Sebastio Salgado, the legendary photojournalist recalling the destruction that greeted him upon arrival in the Kuwaiti desert in 1991, where he photographed several hundred oil wells set aflame by retreating Iraqi troops. The sabotage led to one of the world's worst environmental disasters in living memory. Armed with his cameras, Salgado embedded himself with the teams of firefighters on the ground, where he captured a series of astonishingly powerful and poignant images that conveyed the human environmental impact of the disaster. These photographs are collected in the new Tasha monograph, Kuwait, a desert on fire. Also amongst those present on the ground at the time was Mike Miller, the CEO of Safety Boss, an emergency response company based in Canada. Miller and his teams led the cleanup efforts in Kuwait, and now exclusively for this podcast, he speaks to Tashan's Eliza Rapoli from his home in Calgary. So, Mr. Miller, thank you so much for joining us to share your experiences of the oil wells disaster. You were among the first people on the ground in Kuwait after the fires had been ignited. Can you describe the scene that you found when you got there? Well, I can to this extent. I thought I had a, a mental picture, but when we got there, it, it was just far greater than anything we expected. I had just never seen anything so immense, and that was probably the biggest description or the biggest adjective. It just went on forever. It's a, a nightmarish picture that was miles and miles of wells burning. And of course, when the wind was against us, it was just as black as night. Sometimes you couldn't even see out of your truck door. So it was just an absolutely unreal world, an immense unreal world. How long were you and your team on the ground working in these conditions? 200 days. The the couple of years that followed were fairly routine and certainly nothing like it was when we landed there. And can you tell us a little more about the actual human effort and endurance required in putting out this expanse of raging fires? Well, we did 180 fires in 200 days, which was kind of an amazing accomplishment. I can tell you that it was a tremendous emotional experience and involvement. We kind of knew that we were on the world stage and it was our time to play a role here. And, and as I say, I think everybody realized that this is a disaster that is going to affect the world if we don't do our job. And our core group would be about 10 people. And then we supervised the people that actually did the work on the well, 30 active employees of ours out there, and they would be assisted by usually a support group of at least 50 people. And obviously these working conditions were extremely dangerous. What were the greatest risks? The highest danger for us was we removing the damaged equipment. We can stand the flame exposure to our bodies, but it's our breathing system that we're always most concerned about. For every guy that's in the hole, we have one guy that's prepared to rescue him. One of uh, Sebastio's pictures does show a guy that appears to be passed out. What happened to him is, is that when they're covered with crude oil as he is, you don't sweat. So consequently, you're only good for about 20 minutes. It's 30 above every day. It's often 40 and 50 above every day. So the atmosphere without the oil is a huge problem. And in his kind of panic and exertion to get his boots unstuck, he just passed out. He is being walked out by two of his comrades. Overexertion, well, overheated. So you and Sebastião met on the ground. You're featured in a number of his photographs along with members of your team. How did you two first encounter each other and begin to work together in this extraordinary environment? Yeah, I forget specifically where we met. I think we met in the yard at Al Mahdi. So you've now got your copies of Sebastião's book, Kuwait, A Desert on Fire. How does it feel to revisit this extraordinary and, I would imagine, life-changing experience through his photographs? 
It was so unreal, that world, that sometimes you forget it. It's hard to describe to people what it was like. And Sebastian's pictures just bring all that back to me, how immense it was and how, you know, magnificent, in a sense, that it was. Every day was more than you thought it would be in the, you know, piles of dead uh, camels, of the dead soldiers that we buried have filled your life. It was all you ever did. It was all you ever thought about for eight months, you know. Thanks, Eliza, and Mike Miller, for that interview. Well, that's about it for this debut edition of the Tashin Podcast. Remember, you can keep up with the latest from Tashin at our website, tashin.com, and on social media. And do keep an ear out for our next instalment, where we'll be bringing you more news, interviews, and reviews from Planet Tashin. Thank you for listening, and happy reading. <laughs>